Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Today's goal is to start reassembling the Duval milling machine and my plan is to start with one of the, probably one of the hardest things that I've got to do on this machine and that is get the knee, this large chunk, I'm guessing 500 pounds, I'm not sure, of cast iron up in the air high enough to where we can get it on the ways of the main casting of this machine. And I'm gonna be doing it by myself because I'm the only one here other than Cora and past experience, you know, she's not a lot of help. Moral support, really. So let's see if we can't develop a plan and get this main ca get this uh, knee on the main casting. So I think I'm just about set up. I've got the gantry crane rolled out here. This was brought to me to use by a viewer uh, to disassemble this machine, and I'm going to obviously use this thing to put it back together. It worked. Now this is a 600 pound capacity gantry, and if I remember correctly, it was just tall enough to lift this big casting high enough to where I could get it off of the ways of this machine. It was a little bit, a little bit sketchy, but it did work. So we're going to use that same technique to get it back together. Now a person could build one of these for themselves to use in their shop very, very easily. This thing is super basic and uh, I mean a great size for you know a shop like this. So let's get the head of this machine rotated out of the way so we can clear the ways here get rigged up and then you know start to lift and see if we can't get that knee onto this casting today. Bolt out there. Get everything out of the way. I'm gonna wipe these ways off really quick and run a stone over them. And then we can rig this thing up and see if we can't drop it down on here. All right, so I've got a precision ground flat stone here and then just a slip stone, just, you know, non-precision stone here. This is uh, white gas or camp fuel. I love this stuff and anytime you use a stone, it just keeps them clean. Right, I'm just gonna just ever so lightly go over these ways, knocking the surface rust or right. I mean nothing really touches on this, but we'll clean it up anyway. Knock any high spots off. Just you know, clean back up a bit. Not trying to dig in or anything. Just go over the surface, see what it feels like, and that's it. Right? Wipe it off and slide her together. So this machine was made in Spain back in 1980. So it's 41, 42 years old, depending on the month that it was made. It's the same age as me, actually. So it's still in its prime. A uh, little bit of wear down here at the bottom of the bottom of the ways here. Nothing extensive. Uh, but I think the majority of this is just caused from running this machine out of adjustment. It's sagging right there. Is a lot of leverage out here. Big table, lots of weight on it. So it's a 12. 12 inch by 54, I think. Isn't that right, Cora? Uh, we got a gearbox that hangs off that table. We got the saddle, and we got the gearbox up front along with all the handles and not to mention the work that goes on here. So that is a lot of leverage on these ways right here, but they are in pretty good shape. So you know, I'm not gonna concern myself with just you know that minimal wear there. So let's see if we can't get this thing rigged up and up in the air 
and sit down on that uh, main casting. center gravity will know, be right around in here. We'll see. We'll pick it up, adjust it if we have to, which we will, and uh, go from there. So ever since I built this shop and installed this air system, anytime that I needed air outside of the shop, well, to put air in tires or whatever, I've had to grab this air hose that I've got here just loosely rolled up pull it outside, do whatever I need to do, then bring that back in and either roll it back up or throw it on the floor, which is what I normally do, trip over it for a couple of weeks until I get so sick of that, I end up rolling it up. You know, and that gets old, really old. So I've got an air hose reel right here that I've had for probably over a year and haven't mounted. So today's a good day to do that. It'll save me a lot of effort rolling up back up hoses. So let's mount it up here, you know, Save me a few minutes every day. That's what it's all about, I guess. So I've got a three-quarter T here. This is what I'm gonna use to tie in to my existing air loop up there. We'll use a short piece of tubing there. There's probably better ways to do this, but these are the fittings that I got on hand. Then we have a, what is that, a half-inch NPT to quarter-inch NPT adapter that will screw in to our airline there. And that'll all just tie in to our existing system. So let's see if we can't make up this fitting and, uh, you know, get it up on the wall. So just a little piece of this to tie our two fittings together. That's the same stuff that uh, I've got ran along the shop here for my air system. So before I can cut into my line, because I've got pressure in my system, I'm going to isolate that loop that I've got around the shop and then bleed off the pressure from my water uh, catch here. This thing actually works really well. I've never had air or never had any measurable amount of water uh, get through here. hose reel up here. Okay. Should have been a little longer. Uh, it's over here. A ladder mat for safe. What one time? I don't even know what you're talking about. Uh 
the viewer sent me this ladder mat. Uh, it just adds traction to the foot of the ladder, which is nice. And Elizabeth can kind of help me as well. Second stay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hope I don't come flopping down. I'm not. I'm using this place to tie in my uh, T fitting so I can tie into that hose reel. This is getting removed this fitting here well heck hand me that cutter please and that uh yep yeah. uh, that and yeah those two thank you So what I'm using to mount this hose reel to the wall is just two uh, quarter inch Tapcon anchors, concrete screws, whatever you want to call them. Um, I've had really good luck with these things. I've, they're a little bit pricey. I've got a few left over from when I was building this shop. I used them in lots of locations and I really love those things. They hold extremely well. So that's all I use. Two Tapcon anchors. Twisted this hose up before I'm screwing it in. That way it doesn't bind up. That's it. And this air system that I have in here is really, really easy to tap into and you know modify as you as you need right in the future. There we go. I just got to put my air coupling on the end. And we're good, I think. And leak check. So this hose reel, all the hose fittings that I use in this shop, or at least 99% of them, are all made by Flexzilla. They're the high flow, quick disconnect. Really like those things. I've had great luck with them. Not a sponsor or anything. They're just good. pressurize the system. Make sure it doesn't leak. So I leak checked it. No leaks. Man, I don't know why I didn't do this a year or so ago. Just so nice. Hopefully this reel holds up. Makes it so nice if you want to put air or something, some tires or whatever. You know, no tangled up hose to trip over. And it's up and out of the way, which is a huge, huge thing.
Wow, I almost got it perfect first shot. Should have put this thing on the scale. Probably already did that thing. So this screw here that the knee sets on, or that lifts the knee, it's actually a compound screw, and I probably mentioned this before when I took it off. We have a screw here that actually nests inside of a screw here, so it can extend twice its length, right? Otherwise, this screw itself would have to be longer than what uh, is possible given the space that it has to be confined in to lift the knee the entire tra distance of the way. Does that make sense? I think it does. So that almost went on too easy. Okay, so our, the knee or that screw bolts to the knee knee screws. What did I do with my... Did I already lose those Allen wrenches that quick? So this is the gib for the uh, for the knee up and down. Gib screws, one for the top, one for the bottom. So this is just a limiting screw at the bottom, and then the top one is actually or a limiting or locking screw at the bottom, and then the one at the top actually a special 
I don't know if you can see that, but it locks into the gib and allows me to move it up or down, tightening or loosening the fit of the knee to the main casting. So that went way smoother than what I expected that it would. I thought I'd be battling this thing, but thankfully you know, everything cooperated. It was a lot harder to get off than it was to put on, which is surprising. Usually it's the other way around. So these locks, all they do is press uh, the little stud up against the gib and just uh, tighten up the gib onto the ways and that pulls everything together and you know, tightens up the fit. It makes the machine you know, far more rigid because it has to be loose enough uh, with these unlocked for everything to move and that it having to be that loose makes a little bit of play in there and locking these just takes out that play. I mean, that's obvious to anybody who machines stuff, but you know, if you, if you don't, that's the, the function of these are gib locks to lock the movement. So unfortunately when I stopped on the milling machine, I didn't stop finished and ready to put this machine completely back together. So there's still a lot of little parts and pieces that I need to clean up before I can, before I can install them and be happy. I kept lots of little chips and stuff in the gear teeth. This is uh, this mates to the gear that lifts uh, the knee on that machine, and I don't know how well you can see that, but it needs cleaned up. This is just simply not going to go together with that installed first. So here's a look at the table. Cora's laying in front of it, uh, in front of, and also laying in front of the heater, which I don't blame her. Uh, 10 or 12 by 54 long. We had the top ground, a little dirty right now, and the bottom, both flats and the dovetail. So this table it's actually better than it was new. I forget how many thousandths of an inch it was off uh, the dove or the uh, uh, T slots to the actual uh, machine ways. It it was flawed from the factory. So should, this machine will be, uh, at least as far as the table goes, more accurate now than it was when it was brand new. Well, as much as I hate to, I'm gonna have to stop here. Talk about a busy week. This week was my 42nd birthday, I'm getting a little old. My 20th wedding anniversary to my lovely wife Elizabeth. It's been a, uh, that's been a long time too, but not near as long as my mom and dad's 63rd wedding anniversary, which was this week as well, not to mention my mom's 82nd birthday. So I've had obligations this week. Glad to get as far along on this as I did, although I was hoping that I would at least start fitting uh, the knee or the saddle 
to the top of the knee here. You know, this still needs flaked. I got to cut my oil grooves in that. You know, there's just, there's not enough time to get started on any of that uh, before I'm out of time. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who's helped me out whatsoever, I definitely appreciate it. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.